piano and my guitar. She can play the piano part while she's singing a verse that's not on that page. That's that's when I decided I needed to have the surgery on my eyes because yeah. I couldn't oh, when you do it. Mm. And I've always been able to do it. <laughs> there you go. Because it requires a little bit of focus. So let me say, we are uh, this is the seventh day of Christmas. I don't know if you've been counting, but last Friday, when we were last here together, we did the fifth day of Christmas, five golden rings. Um, Saturday was the sixth day of Christmas, and we're mushing to that the reading I picked for that day with today's reading. But Sunday is not one of the days of Christmas. Sunday is one of the days of Easter. Always remember that. Every Sunday of the year is Easter. Because the reason we're worshiping on Sunday is because of Easter. If it weren't for Easter, we'd be worshiping on Saturday, right? But Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday, and so Christians said, we're always going to worship on a Sunday. So in Lent, there's 40 days of Lent. If you count them from Ash Wednesday through through uh, Easter, you, you get 46 because you're including the Sundays. You pull the Sundays out, and it's 40. So uh, that's, that's why uh, this works this way. So we're going to end up with this. The 12th day of Christmas will be uh, Epiphany on January 6th. So, the readings for the 6th and 7th day of Christmas. Matthew 2, 1 through 15. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. 
and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. The angel didn't have to say fear not. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> huh. Well, maybe we're just not getting the whole thing. Well, or maybe Joseph and Mary are used <laughs> to angels by now. I don't know. Um, well, it was in a dream, too. That's a little different. A little different. Yeah. Um, so we got day five, I mean, day six and day seven together here, and it's all, so there's a lot of things we could talk about. Uh, hard for me to pick. I, a couple of that I think are really important. First of all, the, the standard disclaimers. We don't know about that there's three wise men. It doesn't say how many wise men. We don't know exactly what wise men means. I mean, there's, we, people talk about kings. Uh, um, astrologers, astronomers, two different things. Um, these are people who are obviously studying the stars, that much is given, um, wealthy enough to travel and, and bring wealthy gifts, and, and they bring three gifts, which are odd, profoundly odd gifts. So the First big point I want to make out of this. People who don't know God's word still see true things in the world. They, they're still able to see God's, God reveals himself. It's, a, it's sort of, you know, a little concealed. It's not, he, they don't see exactly what's going on, but they see something. And, and they... People who don't know God's word, people who don't know Jesus Christ, are struggling to know God. So Paul refers to in Acts chapter 17 when he's talking with the people in, in Athens. You're seeking God, but you don't know him. And the one that you're seeking, that's who I'm here to tell you about. So these, these men uh, understand they need to know and honor God. And something is going on here in the stars that says, we need to head in this direction. And what do they do? This is the second major point. People who are seeking God and they see things in the world, they have to go to the Word. So, so you're a geologist and you see things in, amazing things in the world. How do you understand them? You have to go to the Word. That's where you'll understand the meaning of things. You can understand the existence of things, but the meaning of their existence you won't find in nature. Uh, a biologist, and you see these amazing things in bodies, and the way things grow, and what's happening with life in the world, and, and, uh, and yet you will not understand the meaning of life and what is happening until you come to the Word, or to somebody who has the Word. 
And the people who have the word may not understand it fully. They get to, to Jerusalem. Here, uh, they're directed to, they come to uh, King Herod because he's the guy in charge. And they're asking their questions. And the people who give them answers from God's word are not aware of what God was doing. Which, by the way, is, has already gotten done. Jesus was born uh, on Christmas Day, whatever that day was, and um, and they settled down in Bethlehem. The next day, they find actual housing, right? Instead of instead of in a stable, the stable was very likely a cave. There are lots of animals. There's lots and lots of caves all over Israel, and um, uh, it's a it's a just natural geological feature, and um, very possibly this this house is built on top of a of a cave beneath it that where that opens out it's like a it's like a walkout basement in a sense and um and they stayed there uh where it's nice and warm with the animals and then there there becomes guest room available and they can stay in someone's home so Jesus is now a toddler Jesus is now famous Elliot's age and mm-hmm. running around um and saying shoo 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 if he knew what their what trains were at that time, and the and the wise men arrive and ask about a baby born about such and such long ago, and oh yeah, uh, and they're pointed to the the star leads them somehow to this house, Mary and Joseph and Jesus, and he's he is known by them, and they leave three gifts, gold. Frankincense, gold, which is a sign of a king. Frankincense, which is for anointing. And myrrh, which is for burial. I Is there some significance in Eastern thought at that time that we don't know about? Or does God direct them to bring these things because they're valuable, but because... Uh, it represents what's going to take place in Jesus' life. That he is the king, that he is the anointed one, that he is going to die for our sins. Don't know. Don't know. God doesn't bother to tell us everything just as he didn't bother to tell them everything. And yet they knew what was most important. They knew who to go to. And so uh, they followed the star. Again, the star, the word in the Greek is... Any any kind of a of a heavenly body or heavenly event. It could have been a comet. It could have been a. There's any number of things it could have been. Conjunction of stars. Um, so we don't know that. People have lots of theories, and I won't weigh in on one or the other. Um, and then uh, they are, they are warned in a dream. So God speaks to these people who were until now unbelievers. But Mary and Joseph tell them, this is who you brought these presents to. This is what God told us. It never hit me until today that these gifts are a way of God providing for the trip they have to take to Egypt. Yes, right. Because they were going to need some, something. They need resources. Yeah. So then, so then they flee to Egypt and, and here too, God is doing things in a way to communicate, especially to people then, that that this child who is, you recall, uh, born in the ancestral city of David, uh, circumcised as an Israelite, um, uh, redeemed in the temple with the sacrifice, as, as all those who belong, the firstborn who belong to God have to be bought back. All these things where he de- identifies with God's people, uh, and and now going into Egypt and come and having then to come out of Egypt um, for the sake of his life, just as the Israelites did, he identifies with Israel again that that like God's people, he is following their tracing their path in his life and and coming back out of Egypt to the land of promise. Luke cuts that short. He goes straight from uh Jesus being born in Bethlehem to then they move to Nazareth and he grows up there. But uh, but there is this uh, hiatus of we don't know how many years. Somebody does, but I haven't looked that up. Uh, so that he can say 
as it says, I think in uh, Isaiah, or is it Jeremiah? In Jeremiah, out of Egypt, I have called my son. God is working through things we don't fully understand, and we don't need to know at all. This is the big, the big danger is that people make stuff up when they don't know what it is. That's when we start to make up this, that, and the other thing to because it pleases us. Um, so some things, you know, we think somebody has a theory about the star. That's great, but you don't know it. So, so we try, pastors try very hard not to preach things that are uncertain or just their speculation which might be a good idea and it might be very devotional, but to remind people, hey, this is the part we know from God's word and this is the part we aren't sure of, but we're thinking about. It's the same with our world and our life broadly. I know lots of things about the world. I know things about economics. I know things about tools and machinery and, and life. Uh, but there's so many things I don't know. And especially the biggest question always, why? Why the automobile accident? Why the cancer? Why the why earthquake. why the earthquake yeah. in Japan? Yeah, or the house that exploded in Whitmore Lake a couple days ago. Um, why did, did this happen? The meaning of things is here. To the degree that God will tell us, and the most important part of the meaning, we know from here. The reason for all things in the end is because God loves us and wants us to be with Him forever and ever. And he will pay any price, even the life of his only begotten son. God will give anything to bring us to himself. There's the reason for this next year, 2024. What will it bring? We don't know. But we come to God's word and he will guide us through. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to fill in all the blanks. Thank you, Lord, that when we when we come to your house, we can talk with those wise men who learned to know Jesus as a little boy. Lord, grant that until then, we will be content with whatever answers you give to us. Even the one that Job hated so much, just be quiet and trust me. Lord, we know we can trust you because we have seen your love for us in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. And we'll try not to be so late tomorrow. Uh, it is New Year's Day and whew, we stayed up and watched the ball drop last night. So. We don't usually do that. <laughs> we forgot what it does the next yeah. day. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day.